Hey there, welcome to lesson 3 of chapter 8. In this lesson, we'll be talking about brand behavior. As we have seen in our first lessons and chapters, branding is no longer about what you say it is or what the brand promises. It's more about how your customer thinks it is. It's what he feels when he sees your brand. If you want your brand to convey a certain message, you'll not only have to say what you want to say, you'll have to walk the talk or you'll have to act accordingly. So that's why in this lesson we'll be taking a look at the brand's behavior because it really matters when you're thinking about messaging, not only about what we're going to say, but also like how are we going to act because that's also how you send out a clear message to the world, of course. Now you might be thinking, messaging strategy personality brand behavior it's getting a bit complex i want to just draw this really simple diagram where we can see how how these things relate to each other and what they really mean so let's take a look at how this will all work together first off we ask ourselves this most important question how will we become how will we become the leader in how will we challenge the status quo? This is really the strategy. This is wondering about the brand's purpose and essence. Then we will need to think about what will we say and how. This is really about chapter 8, messaging. Then we need to think about how will we look like? How will it feel? How will it look like? What's the logo? What's the typography? What's the color? What kind of textures? What kind of photography? What kind of motion? All that stuff. And finally, the category we are discussing in this lesson. How will we act like? How will we be? How will we be in the real world? This is the brand behavior. And it's oftentimes forgotten. And if you combine all those things, the intersection between all these is what makes you different. It's your position. It's, it, will, it answers the question, how will we be different? How will we be better? This is what customers really love about your brand. If you act like you say you will act and if you have a bigger purpose and the visual style answers to that, then you will have a strong brand. Now I know what you might be thinking, wasn't this course all about strategic thinking? Where are we talking about behavior and brand actions? Well, actually, you need to think about this. If you want to know what the brand will become, you really need to think about this in a strategic way as well. You need to plan ahead what kind of behavior there will be happening. Brand strategy really has a foot in the actual brand behavior. If not, it's just bad strategy or it's strategy for strategy's sake. We're not trying to create beautiful words that will only work internally for a team. We're trying to create a strategy that is actionable and that can be used in the real world. Let's take a look at how we can enable a brand to walk the talk or lay a strong foundation for how it should act. Brand behavior for me exists of three important pillars. The first one is the company culture. Second one is the messaging guidelines. And the third one is the brand actions. These overlap in many ways, so I know it's not always a clear distinction, but let's go over each one and see what's really important and how we can start thinking about these things. So company culture is really important. To instill a certain behavior on the whole crew, we need to really think about what the company culture is and what it needs to be. Of course, you can't really enforce a company culture, so you need to Take a look at what's there and how you can enforce certain values or maybe uh, reward things that are really working for the company culture. It's not easy to shape company culture. As the famous saying goes, culture eats strategy for breakfast. It's really something you need to inspire and create a platform for, but not just say this is the company culture we want. Let's take a look at a couple of steps we can undertake to Create a better company culture. Inspire the team by explaining the brand's purpose. Include employees in a series of workshops around the brand. Create a charter or promise that each employee signs to engage in brand behavior. 
hang out posters of the brand values, manifesto, and so on. Here are some great examples of these values hanging out in the real world inside of the company. This makes employees on a day-to-day -day basis aware of what their brand really is. Distribute a brand book that shows the brand values and personality. Create internal mascots that support the brand ID. Here are some examples. Make sure employees are re rewarded internally for supporting the brand purpose or mission. Remember, employees or staff members are physical copies of the brand. So if they don't get your brand purpose, why would your customer ever get it? So when you're working with the client, really try and get as much of the, of, of the people of the team on board or try to be there before launching and really talking about the strategy. They need to have the feeling that they are involved and that they support the strategy or the brand purpose. Otherwise, it will be really hard to, to bring it to the customer. So the second pillar of good brand behavior is messaging guidelines. This is really thinking about a set of clear guidelines that can inspire a certain tone of voice and messaging. It's not a rigid set of guidelines where you really limit people to talk in a certain way. It's more about giving them the right tools and even examples so they feel inspired to, to work with the brand voice. Let's take a look at some examples of messaging guidelines that are really created to inspire. Here's one by Walmart. And here's another one. A good set of messaging guidelines should at least contain the tone of voice, the, the personality traits, do's and don'ts, examples of great copy and bad copy, and especially why it's bad and why it's good, of course. So don't try to create conversational scripts where you actually start thinking about the, the actual conversation. If you want your brand to feel authentic, you need to let the people talk in their own way. And the third pillar is brand actions. Of course, as a designer or strategist, we can't just go out and do things for the brand. A lot of times we have to inspire the client and let them do the actual things in the real world. But what we can do is inspire the client and give them a set of examples and maybe have a brainstorm with them. So they start seeing a broader scope of what's possible and what they should be doing when they really think about their brand. A perfect way to do this is to think about first the implications for the client, that's really important. And secondly, give some really good examples. Implications matter because you make the client aware of the responsibility he has when choosing a certain set of values or, or choosing a certain mission or vision for the brand. If the brand wants to become uh, the, the leader of, of creating a better sustainable world, you, you have to point out to them that they really need to act upon that and question these things because otherwise it will fall through the cracks and customers will see that they're just trying to be authentic and that's where it really gets problematic. So I usually include a set of implications on the strategy. For our case study we've been using throughout this course, Farmu, I take a look at some of the brand values and try to think about the real applications. So one of the values was honesty. It must be portrayed throughout our farm to table delivery service. So transparency involving pricing, margins and so on. How can we really deliver honesty on our service? We value family, so we need to support families in real life. We want to teach kids about healthy local food. Maybe we need an educational program or workshops. This could be really interesting. We need to support the local farmers, of course. How will we do this? How can we really act upon the value of fun? Where can we add delight and fun inside of the service? And even maybe when a meal is delivered, how we can we add this spark of fun that we really want to light up the experience? How will we guarantee our food is always farm to table? How will we show this to our customers? Remember the example of fish people I gave? where you can find the actual origin of your food when you scan in a code on the packaging. We really need to think about this. We want to be accessible. What does that mean for our pricing and how will we enable this? So as you can see, questioning these values and, and trying to think about the applications can really spark new ideas for the brand. 
let's take a look at some more things you can try to think about for the brand or for your client. Events. What kind of events could the brand create to support the brand vision? Customer support. How can we enable customer support to support our brand vision? Campaign ideas. What other ideas could really show the brand in its most strong position? Oftentimes this will be related to the launch campaign of the brand or the relaunch when we're doing a rebrand. Support and sponsoring. What organizations or people could our brand endorse support? Customer loyalty. How could we help our customers become loyal fans? How can we create awareness among our customers or our loyal customers about the brand and the vision and our bigger mission? So the most important part in this brand behavior is that we really try and inspire and instill the idea in our client that the brand behavior should be authentic on all levels. We can't just create an ID for a brand that will only work on, for example, the sales and then let it fall through on the experience. People will know and you won't build up a loyal customer base. Giving some examples to your client can really help them to see how bigger brands or smaller brands are really doing this in the real world. Here's an example for American Express. American Express could always say they were about small business, but there wasn't much reason to believe them until they launched Small Business Saturday, now coined the Shop Small Movement. This is a yearly event that celebrates the small brick and mortar businesses and stimulates customers to visit these stores. This really positioned them as a brand for small businesses. All the content, marketing slang in the world couldn't have created this position for them. Patagonia, another example I already gave in this course, created a platform for social organizations. It's called Patagonia Action Works. You can easily locate and engage with local NGOs on certain topics. Developing this platform shows that Patagonia really cares about this kind of thing because they, they didn't do this to monetize it in some way. They just wanted to give back. Patagonia has a lot of other great initiatives. I suggest you take a look. The link is in the course notes. Volvo Life Paint was a great example of brand behavior. By distributing a paint to bikers that reflects light, they extended their core vision and purpose of safety beyond cars and reaffirmed their position as a car brand that really wants to create durable and safe solutions for everybody. All right, that was it for chapter eight. I think the most important lesson to take away from, from this last lesson is that strategy is not about something fictional we are creating. It's really about thinking how these kind of values and purpose will be acted upon in the real world. So even when you are doing strategy and you have an idea like um, transparency, well, that could mean we could do something like give a workshop where we talk about our, our the resource of our food or whatever. Just write these down, make a mock-up of your, or even a prototype and show this to the client because then you will start really leveling on what the, what the strategy is really about. So in the next chapter, we'll be taking a look at how to bridge the gap between design and strategy. See you there. Uh, like, like, like.